Okay, so this is a video showing our Pro Stop stop and fence system. This is our fence. It's two and three quarter inches tall, one and three quarter inches deep. It's an aluminum extrusion with T slots on all the faces. This is our sliding stop. It's got two locks and it slides in position in order that you can lock it and make a good, accurate cut on a chop saw, a drill press, a band saw, or a similar piece of equipment. So when we install this system, we install the fence rail first. This is the fence rail, and we're marking this system to be in line or coplanar with the existing fence. And using the existing fence already in place, our measuring system actually starts here and goes uh, to the left some distance, depending on the length of the product that you buy. And so that gives us an actual about 10 inches extra measuring range in doing that. So, basically the first thing we have to do when we get the system installed is put the sliding stop onto the fence, move it relatively close to the blade, and we need to cut something to calibrate the system. So in this case, if I were to cut an aluminum extrusion, I would put it on here, make sure the fence is locked, or the stop is locked, put the material up against the stop, make your full cut with the chop saw, um, same way that you normally would, and you take this piece out and you're going to measure this piece with the best accurate tool you have. In this case I'm using one of our pro panel measuring devices. So we measure that part at 12.523 inches. So once I measure that we're going to come back over here to the stop. We use the plus and the minus keys in order to get this calibrated to the correct dimension. And the longer you hold the plus key or the minus key the faster the display will scroll up or down. And once you have it calibrated, you can lock the keypad with the cut key combination of the on off and the units key. Notice the lock indicator appears in the upper left corner of the display and you unlock the exact same way. So press and hold the on off key, tap the units key and the display is locked. That disables the plus, the datum and the minus keys so that if somebody accidentally presses those we don't lose our calibration. So the other keys, the way that they operate, you've got an on-off key here. Obviously, if you press it, it turns the display off, and if you press it again, it displays, turns the display back on. After a few minutes and showing the software version, it displays the dimension again. Now that dimension can be displayed in decimal inches, like you see here in three places, which is the factory default. You can also display in millimeters, and if you want to turn on fractions, the unit will also display in sixteenths, thirty seconds, or sixty-fourths. I have all those disabled on this unit right now. All of the characters are about a half an inch tall, so they're easy to read from a distance. The digital readout does have auto power off. If no motion is sensed and no key activity is done for 15 minutes, the readout will power back on. And if it senses motion when it's turned off, it will automatically turn back on and show the correct value for you. So if you need to use these keys, these are pr pretty much only for calibration, but they are existent right now. Like I said, I've got those locked out. You can also set a temporary zero position with the incremental key. Press and hold it for three seconds. You can set a preset value, in this case my curve value, um, or you can set it to be exactly zero if you want to. Um, and then to go back to your absolute position, you're going to press and hold that key for three seconds, and it does the math for you if you've moved the stop in the interim. So the other thing I want to show you today is about the, how the, the actual um, Pro Stop system works. If you're just making a rough cut where you don't care so much about your accuracy, then you can say, say this is a target of 15 inches, I can lock just the handle above the flip stop and that sets this thing and it's locked in position and this won't move. Now if I want to do a more accurate positioning, then I can roughly position this where I want, say 18 and a half. I can lock down the other handle, the one not above the flip stop. I can use the fine adjust wheel and turn that to exactly where I want. And once I've got it, I can lock the other handle and lock the whole system in place. When it's locked, if I cut that part and now I just want to do some rough cuts, I can flip that stop up and it's completely out of position. You see it's completely out of the way of the parts or the materials that you'll be cutting. Alright, and so the Pro Stop is also supplied with quick sets, and these are little indexes that can be installed in the front T slot of the extrusion. 
I've got a few of them on this pro stop here at different positions and these are just happen to be positions that I use on this pro stop to cut the same length products on a very regular basis and so um, if I flip this out then it becomes uh, an, an obstruction to the sliding stop and as we move the sliding stop it hits that stop that uh, quick set and we can lock our stop into place and you can see I'm almost exactly 29 inches so this is set up for exactly for that size that I cut every single day same is true for the existing ones. The ProStop system is supplied with two of the quick sets and of course when they're not being used they just fold into that T-slot and the sliding stop goes right past them as if it's not there at all.